and we're back. So, what I wanted to change was I didn't want a, a release turning a forward movement into an off movement because if you do that by just getting two surfaces at an angle, you'll need more, more power, it'll be a stiffer. So, first of all, trigger bar out. I'll just put them to the sides. We will need them for a, a while. And I got a punch. Just press this with a thumb bit forward and you can press out. This here, very easy. And do remember how this one sticks in there. This, very important, is that this angle goes up. Because if you put it the other way around, it'll get even stiffer. I learned that the hard way. And it seems like on the drawings there are that this step should be on top, but I haven't found any problems there. So now the trigger is free in there. This here makes the tension for the hammer and the sear. Here. You just got a small pin in here, 1.5 millimeters. It's the only one I got. I don't have any others, 1.5 millimeters. So I just um, usually push this here out. I just use the 1.5 millimeter drill and it usually works. Um, there's a bigger side. You can see this, this one side is bigger and one is smaller. Which way you put it in is important. Um, because it puts the tension on there. So first of all, let's see if I can get this in here and keep my hands in front. <laughs> so pin, if you can, I got two big fingers, I think to show that, but if you look here, I don't know if it'll focus. If you look here, there's a, it's a bit bigger up there. So keep that, it's very important you don't lose it. So what I did was I created uh, some walls where I could mount stuff. This here's a print that I'm going to be sending to someone who would test it and give me his thoughts. So these here are the sides. They're put like this. What they do is actually they place themselves around, I don't know if you can see them down there, but they are on the outside, inside of the trigger box, there are these walls and they go down there and lock themselves pretty good well up. And the second side locks itself here. So when the trigger unit is put inside the trigger box, uh, nothing moves. Um, I use a small printed part here to just that it doesn't collapse. Um, I just screwed this off to show you. In reality, I could pretty much print this in here. Um, maybe I should because. I usually print the parts first to check if uh, everything fits up. I just got a normal M3 um, by 16 screw, screw in there. Um, if you want to, you can close it up all the way up with another screw from here, but I usually don't bother. It's not needed. And I got some small, I think it's um, small countersunk screws. I think they're 8 or 10. Let's see. Eight. Eight millimeter long countersunk M3 screws. So, uh, this here is the final version that I'm gonna use. Um, and because I only got one of these 1.5 millimeter um, pins, I'm gonna put that in here. So like that, and I just need to line it up and put it through. So there you go. 
pin is in there, semi-auto sear, real sear, and this here gets just um, just screws directly into the hammer. This here is the first version of it, but um, I wanted a version where I could change the original hammer to accept the screw and um, well, we'll do that in the end. Maybe it works. If it works, you will see it. If it doesn't work, um, you probably still will see it. Okay. <laughs> so, what do we need to get in here? First of all, we need to mount this here in here. So, we need to put the, the spring back. And that works best if the hammer is released so put this in here if it wants to go there's a divot in the hammer so when i press this here forward it's pretty stiff just press it forward until i can just hang it in there so second point is getting the the sear in there and i just press on the back and wriggle wriggle it until that thing pops in there there you go so now this is printed i don't know how, la how long it'll last uh, i'll probably make some shooting tests just to check check it but um when this here in the back gets pushed up it releases it's pretty simple with this screw here this screw going in here you can actually set the point of how far the trigger goes back and thus adjust how far back this trigger bar goes. This here is the trigger bar I made for this purpose only. Um, I actually got a couple of versions of these. Um, I got one if you want to use a longer softer spring. This here is a one millimeter longer. You can use the original springs. I, I got some Softer springs um, too. I've got some there. They're pretty soft, but I use them on the Chris Trigger packs. I'll just check. They're about 20. You can, it's the easiest way to check how firm a spring is. Just pull it in your calibers and, and press it. I'll just see. Pretty much the same, so it wouldn't make a difference one way or another. Um, so now we got this in here. What we then do is place the left part, that's the way I do it anyway, left part in here. I need a countersunk screw in there. Um, what I always forget is getting this here in here first. So, this bar needs to be back here. So now we can put the side up because it'll pretty much block it. So, make sure you're in that position. Now you need to get the, this, well, what do we call it? I, I usually call it a sear helper and I forgot how to mount it. Obviously, ah, I know. Release the hammer. Give you a bit more wiggle room. So, that's how it goes in there. It rests on there. And it gets, um, everything is pretty tight tolerances here. So, now I put this here on the side. The small screw goes into that hole. Take the second side, put a screw in here. You can do that afterwards too if you really dig it. So, now sides are locked up. Everything's in place. You need to push this a bit down to get it through the hole down here. And then you just put it a bit in there. So, at some point you'll need to Put the spring in there, and then you just 
wriggle this here in. And I can see we're not all the way in there. You can use the seat on the back and there. Just wriggle a bit back and forth. Now I can see the holes line up on the side. Got a small hole in the bottom. That's what I'm using. Only that screw for demonstration purposes. Well, I would if I hadn't lost it. Ah, now I know where it is. Now I know where it were. That's just dandy. Okay. okay. Putting it in there without the... I'm just uh, looking here. Ah, there you go. Yeah, it just hit itself. So for testing purposes, I only put this one in the bottom. What it does is keep the plate um, tight down. And I, you need to check that the spring, because I made a, I made a boo-boo. So I just need to get our spring back in here. And for that, I need a bit of leeway. Just pull it up slightly. Just slightly, just to get a bit of, you can get a bit of movement on the trigger bar. And if you can move it a bit, you can push it back. Actually, I don't think this happened before. That means you're to blame. Maybe this will help me. Yeah, there we go. So, now the spring guard. I usually wait until the end and I'll just put it back here like this and it'll fit here and get held there so back um actually i worked a lot on this process because i had a lot of trouble doing that so here we go down light press releases with the bolt thingamajig pressed in the front it'll do this and you can see in the end, it will disengage the semi-auto trigger. Oh, semi-auto sear, sorry. So, you put it in here. With the, at the real height. Ah, got it released. So angle wasn't right but it's not easy to see when you're just looking from the side I won't put the back plate on it's not necessary to test it so there you go now with just a slight push and a light push it works really good so what I'm gonna do now is try to ah. let's try to change the real trigger into accepting the screw and the sear. First, need to take it apart. Actually, I think I'll stop this video here and do it on a separate one.